Step over Ghost Rider, there is a new big bad in town for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Hey guys, Rich from Rich Me Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastically well. And this is a video that I didn't know I was going to be making. Um, I was making a completely different video. Um, I was having a conversation with Quinn and a couple of the other guys the other night. And they sort of said, oh, it's been a while since you've done any of your maths videos. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Well, we look at every single character in the game and work out, you know, which character is the quickest or work out which character can do the most damage in a single attack. So I was actually doing a video and it will still be coming out uh, around which character or which individual character um, can deal the most damage across the board in a single activation. And I was going through the list and, you know, going through as normal and we'd set some boundaries and things like that. <clears throat> and I got to an interesting character. And that character is, of course, none other than Nightcrawler. And I read Brimstone Blitz. So usually what I do with these videos is I'll say, OK, you know, if they've got a flurry, they get to hit the flurry and, you know, they then get to do it again sort of thing. But there's nobody else really like Nightcrawler in the fact that his Brimstone Blitz just keeps on going and going and going and going. Now it does need to um it does need to target the same character every single time. But then it got me to thinking like what is the potential of this? Um so if we take a look at uh at Brimstone Blitz, so you can see here it's a range two, it's five strength and it costs one power. Uh, and it's add dice to this attack equal to the number of times this character has been placed this turn and then on a crit and a hit you get flurry of blows after this attack is resolved this character may make an additional attack action this attack must target the original character so that attack action can be a teleporting strike which is his other attack or it can be another brimstone blitz now he has another ability called puff of smoke when this character makes an attack after damage is dealt, this character may use this superpower, place this character within two of the target character. So we've got some huge synergy there with spending a power and then getting to spend another power and spend another power and just continuously upping the number of dice that we get with Brimstone Blitz. And obviously, if we increase the number of dice, that should then increase the amount of damage. It also increases the chances of us hitting our trigger. So it should get easier and easier and easier. Um, and I was thinking about like who, you know, who in the game um, is the toughest character in the game, right? Who is the hardest character to take down in one fell swoop? And I looked at a couple and, you know, there's, there, there could have been one other one, but Hulk has a couple of things going for him. First of all, he has four uh, physical defense. So it's going to be four dice uh, for the most part, four dice uh, on his defense rolls. But obviously the big, big one is he has 20 stamina on his front and he has no back. He is obviously KO'd. So I then got to, um, went over to Cerebro and a big, big shout out to the guys at Cerebro because I use them for all my dice calculations and thought, well, okay, how many of those attacks using average, we always use average damage, um, so, you know, if you were to roll, if you were to roll the same dice a million times and then divide each of the results by a million, you would then end up with with these results. So that's the way that we do it. So, you know, obviously going in with attack number one with only five dice, we would do 1.4 damage. Two dice, we would have 1.87 damage. Um, attack three with seven dice, 2.3. So and you can go down, you can see that we would need to do seven attacks in total um, to be able to do what we need to do to Hulk. Okay, so that we know that. However, there is one other thing that we need to consider as well, which is the percentage chance of this happening. Now, I looked and saw that the trigger percentage for on only five dice was 39%. So 
<clears throat> more than, you know, more than a third of the time on that first dice, you're going to get the trigger. Then it gets easier, 47%, 54%. But the way that probability works means that um, when you add all of those together, it gets infinitely harder to achieve everything. And that is the problem. So overall, we had a 2.88% chance uh, of this happening, um, which is, you know, pretty low, um, to say the least. To give you an idea, um, um, Giant, what's her name? The, uh, the Giant, Supergiant, there we go. Supergiant Spender has a 6.55% chance of triggering uh, without any out outside help. And that is that costs eight, and it just immediately KOs a character, irrespective of which side of their uh, their card they're on. Um, so okay, we had to do some work with this, but we had some other problems as well. So yes, problem number one was power generation. How on earth do we get the power that we need to be able to do these seven? attacks and just to outline because i don't think i'd done it in this video right now i got in my head okay can nightcrawler one shot one shot in a single activation a hulk okay well we know it's possible uh, in terms of the numbers now we need to work out everything else but i sort of took it one step further and it was can nightcrawler do this round one so he doesn't have a whole bunch of power um, he doesn't have um, any, you know, that the, he's not taking damage or anything like that. Hulk's not already on half health or anything. Um, so let's have a look. Let's start with let's start with Nightcrawler. Um, so we know that Brimstone Blitz costs one power, and we know that we need to do seven of them to be able to, on average, take down a Hulk. So we have seven power required, and so far. We've got one from the power phase, which is obviously going to be a little bit of a problem. But that's not the only attack that Nightcrawler has. We also have a teleporting strike, which is a five dice, uh, which from you saw before is going to do on average one point something damage. Um, so that's going to give us an extra power. So that's now two power uh, that we've got. Um, we can then look at cards like Advanced R&D. That can give us an extra power. So that's three power that we're on now um and then there are characters like wong who we can put in rosters um so he can give us one power but even then we were still only up to four power in total right one from the power phase one from advanced r d one from wong one from teleporting strike still nowhere near enough com you know compared to what we actually need to be able to get these seven attacks off so we had to start looking elsewhere. And where do you look? Well, you look at leaderships. So I thought I would start out with Scott Summers. He's obviously the leader or one of the leaders that uh, is in affiliation for Nightcrawl. So I thought that could be quite good. And he has the leadership X-Men Blue. When an allied character deals damage to an enemy character with an attack, another allied character within five of the attacking character may gain one power after the attack is resolved. I was like, okay, well, you know, if we... If every other character, let's say that you were going four wide, five wide, so four not including um, not including Nightcrawler, um, let's say they all get one attack off each, they all do damage, that's four power, plus then the four power that we could get from the likes of Wong and Advanced R&D and all, all those sorts of things as well. We could get to seven or eight power, um, but it's going to be very, very difficult indeed. Okay, so who else generates power as part of their leadership or can redistribute it? Well, Black Bolt can. Black Bolt as King of the Inhumans. During each of your turns, one allied character may spend one power at any time. If it does, an allied character within three of it, um, the chosen character gains one power. Um, okay, so we've got characters like Lockjaw. So we can activate Lockjaw. Lockjaw has, you know, four power when he activates. If he does nothing with that power, um, we can just keep siphoning that in to, um, to, to, to Nightcrawler. But again, um, it was, it was a lot more difficult. It, it wasn't, 
it was only once per turn. Um, you know, we had to generate the power to do things. And I was sort of getting into my head at this point that, you know, I, w I don't just want this to be a fluff list. You know, I want it to be something that we can actually play. Um, so, okay, who else? Who else can do it? Well, Magneto can do it. Magneto's got From the Ruins. Um, and this will allow us to generate power not only on our turn, but potentially on our opponent's turn as well. Um, so every time we destroy terrain, if it's a size three, we then get to distribute three power out to to uh, to, to, to three different characters. So it's, again, once per turn. Um, <clears throat> but I thought, okay, well, you know, maybe that will work. But then you look at it and go, okay, um, Magneto's six threat. Nightcrawler is four. You're probably then taking the likes of Juggernaut. You're already at 15 power. You just don't have the breadth of characters to be able to generate that power that's needed. So probably not viable. And then lastly was She-Hulk. Uh, she's obviously got the defenders of Arcadia. Um, this is a power every time one of your characters is injured. or Sorry, is takes damage. Um, but again, it's reliant on your opponent doing it. It's nothing we can control. And then I had a moment where I realised Red Skull. Now, whilst Red Skull um, is not a character that you see a lot, I still think as a leader, he's pretty damn good. And he has a very nice leadership and a leadership that works perfectly for what we need. Master of Evil. Each time an allied character damages an enemy character with an attack, after the attack is resolved, the attacking character gains one power and there's no limit to this whereas all the other ones are once per turn there is absolutely no limit to this whatsoever so all we need is one power on nightcrawler and as long as we do one damage every attack and we get the trigger we're going to be able to do it essentially infinitely um so and it's only going to get easier and easier and easier as we as we go through um, so yeah, this is going to be guys, the core of things. So we've got Red Skull, we've got Advanced R&D, we've got characters like Wong. Um, and I feel like now we are getting into the realms of being able to generate the power and get what we need to get Nightcrawler sorted. Um, so with all of that done, it leads us into problem number two. Yes, I've mentioned it once already, but I wanted to make the roster viable. Um, I didn't want it to just be a fluff roster. Um, I wanted them to be characters in there. I wanted there to be tactics cards in there that could have multiple uses. Um, and, you know, this be a roster that on the odd occasion where you can get this off, you can try and do it. But outside of this... It's still going to be a, co a competitive roster and something, you know, using characters and not putting all the eggs in one basket every single turn. And that's the only trick that you've got. Um, so that was that was a big, big problem for me. But I felt like with the breadth of characters we had in Cabal, I think there's something like 34 affiliated characters in Cabal now. Not all of them accessible to us. You know, we're not going to be playing a Malekith. We're not going to be playing any of the other Red Skulls because... Obviously, we need the OG Red Skull, um, but plenty of good characters in there and plenty of characters uh, that um, can potentially help uh, Nightcrawler achieve what he wants to achieve as well. So I was happy with that. I was confident and happy that we could build a, a roster that would work um, <clears throat> within the parameters of, of what we set. Um, and then I started doing my maths again and I realized that we had another problem. Yes. So, if you remember, we had this 2.69% chance of uh, of being able to do this attack. Um, but then I realised that when I was doing my maths, I had not accounted for something. And that is, of course, Hulk, not Puny Banner. While this character is defending against, mist sorry, against energy or physical attacks during the modified die step... It may use his superpower. It may reroll any number of its defense dice, including failures. So I reran the numbers and I had a look at what it would look like. And whilst 
the percentage chance has gone down significantly. We now need to do eight attacks rather than just um, rather than just the seven. The big big problem was the average damage on that first attack. It was less than one, and that meant that if we don't get the attack off or we don't do damage, we don't generate the power. We need both the damage and the trigger to go through. Um, and then I got thinking, I was like, okay, well, I've, I've done my maths here based on Hulk being able to use Hulk Not Puny Banner every single turn. But that won't be possible because we're not going to be doing enough damage into him every single turn the way he's going to generate enough power. So what does it look like if we start him off on, say, four power, just for argument's sake, so he can do it the first time? And whilst it... Um, didn't really change much, if I'm being honest. It really didn't change much. There were still two glaringly big problems here. Average damage was 0.81 on that first attack, and the overall chance of getting all of those triggers was 1.69%. And at this point, guys, I thought, well, do you know what? It was a fun little idea for a video, but that is probably it. The video is now probably done. Um, it isn't viable. It's never going to be viable. <clears throat> I was thinking we could get this to, you know, using that six and a half percent that um, uh, Supergiant had. I was like, oh, if we could get like a 12 percent or even even a 20 percent chance of this going through, um, then that'd be absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, the reality is it just wasn't possible. So I left it for a couple of days and then I was sat down, I was building a roster for, for something else and I was looking at the um, the last couple of tactics cards that I wanted to put in there and this card came up and it just triggered something. So Marked for Death, unaffiliated, two allied characters that are within five of the same enemy character may spend one power each to play this card. This round and this round alone the enemy character loses and cannot gain stealth. That's fine. Its speed becomes short. Well, that doesn't really change anything. And it cannot modify or re-roll its defense dice. Bingo. We have solved the problem of Hulk, not Puny Banner. But unfortunately, that wasn't our last problem. Yes, so we had got rid of one problem, but we still had another glaring problem looking at us, and that was the overall chance of actually pulling this off. Um, I looked at these charts, and I thought to myself, well, where's the big problem? Well, the big problem for me was here. There were, there were going to be two things that would really affect the, um, the chances of this being successful. First of all, the average damage that we can get through. And secondly, the actual trigger chance. So the, the higher up that trigger chance was, uh, the more likelihood or the more likely it was that we would be able to get this off. So, you know, what can help with that? Well, we can add more dice. Um, we can add rerolls. Now, rerolls are pretty good. They give us a second stab at getting it. The problem with rerolls is that most rerolls in this game are either on leaderships that you've got access to so the likes of uh, Cable, the likes of Daredevil, so on and so forth, um, or even Black Panther, but they cost power, or you can only do them once per turn, or they come on characters that can give rerolls to other characters, um, but they generally cost power. And remember, we were doing this round one, so what I needed was an infinite source of rerolls that weren't going to cost any power either to the character giving them out or indeed to Nightcrawler himself. And of course, enter the Baron. He was the perfect solution for this. Not only is he Cabal affiliated, so he's going to help us make sure that we've got enough characters in our roster for that leadership, but he brings one of the strongest innate abilities in the game, strategic genius this character and allied characters within two may re-roll one die in their attack or defense rolls no ones per turn no power cost it is just there it happens all the time brilliant so we re-ran the numbers and 
it went up a little bit, like a little bit. Every single trigger went up as a percentage, as you can see, the average damage that we were doing went up as well. Um, but the overall chance of doing this was still only 3.93%. Um, and I started looking a bit more into the numbers and I realized what I needed to try and do was reduce the amount of tax, sorry, reduce the amount of attacks um, that we were having to do to be able to do this in the first place. And there are two glaringly obvious numbers for me. Um, 1.4, so after attack number six, Hulk on average is only having 1.4 health left and we're overkilling him by 3.61 on that last attack. So we need to find a way to be able to eke out another 1.4 damage on average across all of those attacks. We're going to get rid of that seventh attack entirely and it's going to seriously, seriously increase our chances of being able to achieve this. Yes, so we wanted to boost our dice. Even if we could just do it on that first one, it would make a huge difference. So who's the first character when you think about when you are boosting dice? Well, it is, of course, Thanos the Mad Titan with his Death's Decree. Cost two power, not a problem for Thanos. When another allied character within four of this character targets an enemy character with an attack, this character may use his superpower. If it's healthy, add two dice. If it's, in, if it's on its injured side, it's four, but this was turn one. There was no way that we were going to be on our injured side. Um, the problem with Thanos is it's very expensive, and that's really all he was giving us. Yes, he may have been able to do a place or something like that, but that's really all he was giving us. So I looked through, and obviously there's you know, 160-ish characters in the game now. Um, and I remembered that there was actually a Cabal-affiliated character who does pretty much the same thing as Thanos. It's still limited to once per turn. Doesn't have the crazy stuff on the injured side. And there's some downside to it with a bit of damage. But another Baron, Mr. Carl Amade Amadeus Mordo. So what are we talking about? We're talking about Ferocity of Citarac. Cost two power. When another allied character within three of this character targets an enemy character with an attack, this character may use his superpower. The attacking character adds two dice to its attack roll. After the attack is resolved, the attacking character suffers one damage. This superpower will be able to use one. So we don't care about suffering one damage because we're not playing for that, right? One damage on Nightcrawler versus dazing a, a Hulk round one is absolutely worth it. So, okay, Baron Mordo, he's affiliated, big, big tick, and he's got a way of us being able to boost our dice. Excellent. What else can we do to boost our dice and increase the number? Well, if we look back at Brimstone Blitz, Flurry of Blows, sorry, before Flurry of Blows, add dice to this attack equal to the number of times this character has been placed this turn. Okay, well, Nightcrawler has a power called Bamf. Costs X, can only be used once per turn, spend one to three, and you then get to place yourself within that range. You spend one power, you get to place yourself within one, so on and so forth. We don't really care about the range. Uh, we, we might do it later on, but it's for a future riches problem. Um, but can we get another power onto him for him to be able to do this? Well, I think the answer is yes. We already know that we've got cards like Advanced R&D um, that, can, that can do that. And the other way that we can get the power onto him is with Teleporting Strike. So rather than starting out with a Brimstone Blitz, what about if we started out with a Teleporting Strike? That will generate power. That will allow us to do a Bamf. And it will allow us to do a free Puff of Smoke. So all of a sudden, we're rolling two extra dice naturally on Brimstone Blitz just from um, Nightcrawler himself. So we go from five to seven and then we're going from seven to nine because we can boost those dice with Baron Mordo. So with all the rerolls and everything else that we've already got from Baron Zemo, guys, this made a huge, 
huge difference. Obviously, we get rid of that seventh attack completely. We've upped the damage output of every single attack. One of the attacks that we're doing isn't concerned about the trigger because it's an NA, so it's still the same dice attack, but we're not worried about the trigger because we don't need to do the follow-up. So our attack will do, you know, one damage on average, uh, 1.78, so that'll give us one power. We know that they're then going to get another power from Red Skull's leadership, which will give us two. I mean, it gives us power to spare to even potentially do other things. Um, so yeah, up to 20.57%. And I was like, this is amazing. This is this is now, now one in five. This is pretty darn good. But I was still convinced that we could do better. Um, so I started looking at other ways in which we could do that. So yes, the first thing we wanted to look at was lowering Hulk's defences. Now, we already know that we had put a mark, or we were going to be putting a mark for death on him, which was going to turn off all of those re-rolls, plus anything else, cover and whatever not that he may get as part of this. Um, well, there's a couple of other things that we've got access to in the game that can significantly in one case and less so in the other but reduce the defensive capability of characters so number one obviously incinerate incinerate is just going to take off one defense die so whereas he was rolling four all of a sudden he's now only rolling three but not just that we can also give him hex he's not immune to either of them hex is going to stop those spiky rolls, it means that he doesn't get to explode any of his crits. So it means that the maximum number of defense dice he will be able to get as successors is three, which really, really helps us. It stops that spikiness and should hopefully bring our average damage up, um, meaning that we can, again, reduce the number of attacks that we need. Um, and for the newer players, people who have only gone for the new core box, they're the relevant symbols for you guys. The exclamation mark for the hex and then the little flame there for the incinerate. So let's start out with hex. So we needed a character who could dish out hex. Ideally, we want them cabal affiliated. Uh, it could be through a tactics card or it could be through anywhere else. We're not going to have a lot of power. So, you know, these spend three and do it aren't really going to work. Um, and guess what, guys? Baron Mordo dishes out Hex. It doesn't cost any power. And actually, it generates power. So whereas I thought we were going to have to use Master of the Occult to generate the two power that he needs to then be able to um, do a Ferocity of Sitarak, if we look at Bolts of Bishru, after the second resolved, gains one power. Well, that's perfect. Because he's going to start with one. And if we can get one more onto him, then... That's brilliant, because guess what? That's the two power we need for Ferocity of Sitarak. And on a wild, it's going to dish out Hex. So this is amazing. So, again, ran the numbers, put it through, and it, it, it made no difference whatsoever. Uh, I mean, it did make a little bit of difference. Like, you know, it it it, it didn't increase our overall chance of, of getting it. Um, it did slightly increase the amount of damage that we were doing per attack as we expected but it was nowhere near enough to make such a big difference where we would be able to get rid of attack an attack completely so okay pack that to one side we still have some other tricks up our sleeve what about incinerate okay incinerate this is probably going to be the better of the two lowers his defense it's taking away what 25 percent of the of the dice that he gets to roll it's taking away so this should have a a much much bigger impact um who can dish out incinerate so again i'm going through the character list looking through and i stumbled across something uh, that i can't believe i didn't think about before um, but it is of course the other baron mr baron strucker he's still a three threat um he has got a plasma blast which on a wild is going to dish out incinerate it's not going to generate in power because in the rules of this, he's not going to do any damage to him. We want Hulk to be on a on a fresh 20 stack. Um, but he also has 
strategic genius. It's the exact same ability as Baron Zemo. Now, unfortunately, what we can't do is use both Barons, Zemo and Strucker, simultaneously and get two free rerolls per attack. That would be amazing, um, but unfortunately, not possible. Um, but this guy's a better option. Not only does he have the rerolls, he's got other things that he can bring to the party as well. So, sorry Zemo, you're out, and Strucker, you are in. So again, we ran the numbers, really excited about this one. Um, you know, like I say, one less dice. All the other bits, you've got the boosted dice in here. Um, we've also got uh, the re-rolls from now Baron Strucker. And, and once again, it didn't make any difference whatsoever. Um, still 20.57%. That was it. That was it. Um, so I was like, right, okay. Both. Mordor and Strucker are going to be in the roster. They're going to be in the squad. They both dish out Hex and Incinerate. They give the boost. They give the thing. So, actually, we can use all four together. And maybe that makes a difference. And, guys, it did. It did make quite a big difference. And the reason, again, is we were able to get rid of that attack number six. Now, this is just by the skin of our teeth. This is overkilling Hulk by 0 0.01 damage. Like, it was, yeah, absolutely crazy. But, but, 28.73% chance of getting this off. Um, and, guys, it's looking, it's looking pretty good. I mean, I was really happy with 28, nearly 29%. And what do we have to make that up? Well, we've got, obviously, Nightcrawler in the... In the core, we've got Red Skull, we've got Baron Mordor, we've got Baron Strucker, and we've got Mark for Death, and we've got Advanced R&D. Um, and if you work that out threat-wise, um, you've got four for Red Skull, four for Nightcrawler, so that's eight. Plus three, then, is going to take you up to 11, plus another three is going to be 14. So we've got some room here to be able to add some extra characters, because we're not even at the minimum threat level yet. And quite nicely, we only have one unaffiliated and three affiliated characters, meaning that we don't just need to limit ourselves to looking for uh, characters within Cabal. We can look elsewhere as well. So it's at this point I decided that we would enlist some additional help. So I started off with Cabal, because I was like, well, you know, what? why not? Why wouldn't we? And the first thing I thought about was that one of the big things that made the big difference was those re-rolls. If we can get re-rolls in, especially on that first um, brimstone attack, and we can increase that probability of getting the trigger on that first one, I think it will really, really help. So who gives out re-rolls in affiliation? It's Arnim Zola. So Hydra Engineering is going to allow him to spend up to three power um, and they can reroll up to three dice. Um, now, he only starts with one power, but in my head I was thinking, well, we can use advanced R&D, we can put another power onto him um, and maybe we can even get a prototype weapons off. Um, so if we get an advanced R&D on him, that's two power, get a prototype weapons, that's another guaranteed power. We could potentially get one from uh, rolling a, a crit as well, because that scientific hubris gives him another power. But we just stuck with the three rerolls for these particular examples. <clears throat> and um, yeah, yeah, it worked, guys. It really worked. Um, so that nine dice, three reroll attack, plus then the one extra reroll from Zemo, all of a sudden is doing 5.67 damage um, with a trigger of 76.88%. So we're now over the 30% mark. We're at 32.68%. But again, I'm looking at that, that Hulk health and thinking 3.8 is not a lot to be able to try and, <clears throat> and eke out. So what else can we do? What else had a big impact? Well, Incinerate had a big impact. That was quite good. But unfortunately, like we can't, take any more dice from Hulk because he's incinerated once you can't you can't stack conditions um can you so honey badger 
whilst she doesn't stack incinerate, she is essentially a little walking bubble of incinerate. Ankle biter. This character cannot contest, interact, and hold objective tokens, yada, yada, yada. But additionally, when an enemy character within one of his character is attacked by another allied character, the enemy character rolls one less defense die. So I was like, okay, this could be pretty good. So we took Arim Zola's rerolls out, because at this point I was thinking about just adding in one extra character. So we, we took them out, we put in Honey Badger, we ran the numbers, and yes, it did make a difference, but nowhere near the impact that those three rerolls. So reducing Hulk down to two defense dice was less impactful than having three rerolls once, which was really, really interesting to me. Um, so I was like, right, okay, so if if more dice and more successes from our side are the better option and the better way to go for. Um, because at this point, you know, we're going to be capping out um, every time we roll more and more dice. And, you know, what's the difference between two defense versus three defense? But actually, two extra dice here and there and two rerolls can be a big impact on the results that we get. So, who... Guys, who's really good at generating power early doors to use things like advanced R&D and maybe move people about and do such things, but also has a cheeky little ability that means all of the characters attacking that one character for the rest of this round get to roll one extra dice? Yes! Enter the bestest boy that there is. Guys, I knew I'd find a way to fit him into this roster. I did think about Craven at first, but Craven brings no additional benefit. Uh, he's got the exact same ability as Interdimensional Bloodhound, uh, which is basically um, what I said. Add one die for when attacking the, the target character. Um, but he also generates three power when he activates, meaning that he starts the game, as long as you've got people in range, with four power. We've got lots of things we're going to want to spend power on. Um, he's also got a teleport in there as well that could come into things at some point. Um, but again, we swap Ankle Biter out and we just go with the extra dice. And guys, it had an impact. 34.65% chance of being able to take out Hulk in the first round of the game. Okay, we are on a roll but what happens if we combine Arnim Zola and Lockjaw together on top of everything else that we've already got? Well, guys, we get to a 38.64% chance of being able to take him out, um, which I think is absolutely crazy. Like, I was going to be happy with getting 12 i thought 20 was going to be an absolute stretch um but we're now nearly at a 40 percent chance of taking him out four in every 10 or 3.8 in every 10 or 38 in every 100 whichever way you want to look at it which i you know i quite like them odds and i feel like we're doing it whilst building a list that isn't just all fluff like these characters are solid good characters that if this doesn't work, they're still going to have other plans to be able to do to go pick up VPs and score and play the attrition game and whatever else. So let's just quickly recap what we've got to get to that, that 38%. Obviously, we've got Nightcrawler in the middle here. We've got Red Skull as the leader. We've got Baron Mordor. We've got Baron Strucker. We've got the two tactics cards that we had previously. We've now added in Arnim Zola and we've added in Lockjaw. And quite happily... When you add all of that threat level together, it gives you 20 threat. And that got me thinking about the last part of this. Because to make this work, to get to this 38%, um, we need to be at a threat level that allows us to play 20 threat. So yes, crisis card selection. Um, there are only two crisis cards in the game that are 20 threat. And that is Superpowered Scoundrels form Sinister Syndicate and Scrolls Infiltrate World Leadership. Uh, one of them is a secure, one of them is an extract. Um, and at this point I was like, okay, well, 
<clears throat> either or, does it really matter? Do we put both in our roster because it gives us a double chance? Probably. Um, and then I started thinking about, well, what what other things do crisis cards do? Um, they can give out conditions, but really, you know, conditions only happen during the cleanup phase. So they're not going to help us. There's not really any other conditions that are going to affect other than Hex and, and Incinerate. So I was like, okay, what else is there? What else is there? And guys, you know what everyone loves? Everyone loves a hammer. Apart from that one guy, as we know. Um, <clears throat> so it got me thinking. Like, can we do it? Do, do we have enough power? Do we have enough movement to be able to get Nightcrawler close enough to the back hammer and pick it up but then close enough to hulk to be able to do a range three attack to then be able to start because wood extra die as we've seen makes a huge huge difference so i ran the numbers on picking up the extra hammer and uh yeah um cerebro really really didn't like it um i don't know if putting in like a an 11 dice attack with three rerolls on roll one one reroll on roll two the defender not having exploding crits and all that kind of stuff i don't know if cerebro just dropped or what but couldn't get the details from it and i can't work it out myself um so i had to leave it for uh, i left it for a for a day or two but i eventually came back to it and guys we got the number 58.02% chance. Like, this is absolutely crazy. In a roster, guys, that at 23, I do not think is bad at all. Like, it is not a bad roster. And it's not like you're investing so much to be able to do this one thing. Um, if it doesn't pay off, then great. But this is over 50%. This is nearly 60% chance of having this happen. And the reason why is, guys, we only need to get the trigger twice. That's it. We only need to get the trigger twice. In the first one, we've got over 81%. And in the second one, we've got a 71% a chance of, of doing it. Um, that initial attack now, because it's so high, uh, we're doing over seven damage in the first one even the power that we're generating from the first attack right three power plus then two extra gives us the option to do all sorts of different things um but yeah guys it was i was very very shocked by it um i did not expect that we'd be able to get anywhere near this high um but i wanted to see it in action so let's jump over to TTS and I'll take you through and, and show you how we do it, did it and, and also what I learned by going through it actually in person a couple of times as well. So let's head on over and I'll show you. Okay guys, so here we are. This is our setup on TTS. Um, I just wanted to run this through. Um, you know, running the numbers is one thing. Uh, the fact that we broke the last one um, means I just wanted to run it myself and test it. And whilst running it through, I did learn a couple of other things that we could do as well so i'll share them with you um so what are we doing or what have we done so far uh we'll start off uh baron Morder. he activated he moved at once and he did a bolts of bishrew didn't do any damage uh but gained a power meaning that he was on two and obviously was able to put the hex on two hulk next up we had Baron Strucker. He also walked up. He did a single attack, did no damage, but was able to uh, get the incinerate onto Hulk as well. Then this is where it became a little bit interesting because I was playing around with things and we went, first of all, with Red Skull. Now, why Red Skull? Well, he can use the Cosmic Cube and he can generate himself uh, three power, putting him on four meaning that he's got enough power for Master of the Cube. So we used that, and we portaled Nightcrawler up from here to here, meaning that he was both within one of the hammer to pick it up, but also within range three of the Hulk to be able to do his first attack. But it meant we had a power left over. So we used that power 
on advanced R&D, which meant then when we went to go activate Lockjaw, Lockjaw started with two power. The three from Who's a Good Boy meant that he was on five, meaning that we had enough to not only do an interdimensional Bloodhound and make sure everyone's getting extra attack dice into Hulk, but we were also able to use a teleport on Arnim Zola, uh, who, again, as, as per the rules, did no damage, but he did get the extra power from the two attacks with the wild, sorry, with the crits that he rolled as well, putting him on five, meaning that we've now got access to five rerolls rather than the original three. Um, so with all that said and done, guys, let's activate Nightcrawler and uh, yeah, let's start to roll some dice. There's one thing that you'll notice we do not yet have marked for death up. Um, and the reason for that is we want to try and get lucky with this first attack from Nightcrawler. We need to generate two power to be able to make it work. But if we can do, it will be very much worth it. So let's start off then. Let's pick the hammer up and let's put that onto Nightcrawler. And we're going to be starting off with a teleporting strike. Um, this is going to be five dice base. It's going to be one extra dice for the hammer, and it's going to be one extra dice from um, Interdimensional Bloodhound. Hulk is just going to be getting his three. So we'll roll our dice first, see what we get. And that's going to be a couple of crits that we get to roll in. Let's now do Hulk's. Remembering that he cannot... Add in those crits and Hulk has blanked out. Well, what a start this is. We do get one reroll on here, which is another success. So six successes in total. Uh, Hulk does blank out, but he does have uh, cover from um, he does have cover from the uh, from the uh, ambush on the uh, superpowered scoundrels. So that will be five damage going through, which is a pretty good start. So five damage onto Hulk there. We gain five power and then we can do a couple of things. The first thing we want to do is obviously use um, Unglaublick Acrobatic. Sorry, not that one. Uh, Puff of Smoke. So we've made an attack. We get to place ourselves within two. So when we're placing ourselves, we want to make sure that we are within range three of Mordo, range four of Zola and range two of Strucker. So right here in the middle is going to be absolutely fine. So we'll place ourselves here like so. Uh, then the next thing that we want to do is we want to play Marked for Death. So that will cost us one power off Strucker and then two power because he is holding a hammer um, from Nightcrawler himself. We get to put that mark for death token, meaning that we've turned off all of those rerolls and dice modification for Hulk. So let's start out then with our first attack, which is going to be a Brimstone Blitz. Um, it will cost us one power, which we'll do. And the base dice are one, two, three, four, five. We get one for the hammer. We get one for Interdimensional Bloodhound. And we have, oh, we missed one step. We are going to spend another power and we are going to use a Banff and teleport ourselves once. And we just teleport here like so. And the reason for that is it lets us add an extra dice in. So we're now up to 10 dice. Let's make sure we've got that right. Five, six, seven, just from Nightcrawler. Eight from the hammer and it should be on nine. So we should be on nine dice there. But we are not yet done with this first attack. We also have Sobarb from... Uh, sorry, I keep saying Sobarb, but uh, Ferocity of Sitarak. Um, with another allied character within three targets, and the character with an attack, this character may use this superpower. The defending character adds two dice to its attack roll. So we'll spend the two there, and we will add two more dice, in putting us up to 11 dice against Hulk's three. So... Let's roll the dice and see what we get. Remember, we're looking, the key thing we're looking for, and we've got it there, is going to be um, that hit and crit. So Hulk's done pretty good there. He's blocked two. Um, 
we right now, let's use our, um, let's use the reroll that we've got from Zima, uh, sorry, from Strucker, because why would we not use that? Um, that blanks out, but we do have our, we, we, we've met the two criteria that we need. So criteria number one is we need to do damage. If we don't do damage, we don't get the extra power um, from Red Skull's leadership. Um, but we do have that crit and we do have a hit. So I think we're going to save those rerolls for um, the next attacks, basically, just in case we do miss out. So that's going to be four, five, six in total. Hulk is blocking two. So that means four damage will go through. We'll gain a power from Red Skull's leadership. Hulk will take four damage. And we are already nearly halfway there, guys. And Brimstone Blitz lets us do it all again. So it's make another attack action and it must attack, uh, must target the original character. Now this time, uh, sorry, and at the end of that, I keep forgetting this, um, we get to do Puff of Smoke. So we get to place ourselves again, which we will do. So now we're losing out on some dice because we can't use Baron Mordo's thing again. Um, so we're going to be the base again of one, two, three, four, five. We've now teleported three times, giving us three extra dice, plus one for the hammer, plus one for interdimensional bloodhound, giving us ten dice this time. Obviously Hulk is on his three still. So let's roll this in and see what we get. And okay, we get the trigger. We do get the trigger. Let's roll Hulk's dice first of all, see what he gets. And he blocks two again. Uh, let's add in the crit. So we're doing six again. Uh, sorry, we're doing five this time. We get our reroll that's free from Zemo. And it's another success. So it's six, two, it's f another four going through. And again, I think we're going to save it uh, because we have hit our trigger. So we will go with the four damage. So he's up to 13, meaning he has seven left now. Um, we get to gain a power from that because of Red Skull's leadership. And then guess what, guys? We get to do Puff of Smoke again. Poof, he goes just there. Um... So we do it again. We spend another power. It is one, two, three, four, five base. It is one, two, three, four places now, plus a hammer, plus interdimensional bloodhound. And once again, just the three dice there for Hulk. Oh, and this is a very, very good roll. Let's roll in Hulk's roll here. Oh, see what we get. Uh, Hulk blocks one this time. We've got three crits to add in. Which is going to put us on to ten. We get our Zemo reroll. Nothing there. And for the first time, we are going to spend two power on um, Hydra Engineering. Uh, to allow us to re-roll two dice again. So let's see. We may not have even needed to do that, but that's going to be 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, down to 10, which, guys, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, only 7 can go through, and that is a Hulk taken down in a single activation from Nightcrawler. Yes, I know, there was a lot of other things around there, but I just wanted to see for myself how the dice would roll. Um, but guys, I think it is pretty brutal indeed. I mean, guys, I don't know about you, but and this is this is absolute honest truth. Now that was the first attempt of do, uh, doing it, absolute first attempt. And yes, I know we took some liberties, right? You know, we got that number up to so high because. You know, I mean, first of all, what is Hulk, Hulk doing all the way up that board, right? He, he would never be there. Um, so we did take a couple of, of liberties with that. One other idea I had was that, you know, you could maybe put in a Sentinel Prime. So he could, um, you know, get one power onto him, move up, use the cables or restraint cables and pull Hulk towards Nightcrawler. 
Um, and then he gets the power at the end of his turn so he can give out the rerolls like Zola did. So there's lots and lots of different iterations you could you could go in there. But I was going through this the other night and I was on, on a call with Quinn and we were talking through stuff. And he's like, yeah, but Hulk's not the hardest character to take down. What about like Thanos with reality or Cosmic Ghost Rider or Beta Ray Bill, right? Cosmic Ghost Rider and Bill, um, they're immune to incinerate. So they're always getting those four defense dice. Um, so I thought, okay, well, I'll run the numbers and, and let's take a look. And uh, yeah, yeah, he, he, he can he can murder them as well. Um, he can absolutely murder them as well. Obviously, that 58% chance there on Hulk, She-Hulk's identical. Thanos, guys, was nearly 80%. Um, he cares not for your reduced damage by one. Um, even with, this is with the reality gem, even with the reality gem, because we're turning off... Uh, because we're turning off those um, um, those hexes, we're giving him hex, we've turned off those crits, and the fact that he only has three melee defense dice, so it goes down to two, is really, really brutal. Um, Cosmic Ghost Rider did better than Thanos, which I was, I was quite surprised at, but again, immune to incinerate, always counting failures is is pretty darn good um and also bill you know bill does slightly better than than hulk but i just thought i'd include him in there as uh, as an option um but yeah guys if, if if you can if you can get nightcrawler in the right situation I and mean, we, we've used an ex extreme example here with hulk and the idea really wasn't to teach you guys how to beat hulk with nightcrawler right whilst in that perfect scenario with everything lined up, with the hex, with the incinerate, with the rerolls, Hulk stood in the middle of the field for absolutely no reason and nobody else around him helping. Um, yes, you've got a 58% chance of getting this off, but in reality, it is nowhere near that. What I wanted to try and demonstrate with this video is sometimes when you're building rosters, it's really, really easy to just go for the meta go for what people say um sometimes if you look outside of what a character can do and look how they work and can interact with other characters it can unlock some huge huge potential in this game something as simple as an advanced r d on a character that can do something round one with it for example this is obviously a little bit more complex and has lots and lots of moving parts um but, you know, even just with a reroll into a character who has five health, like, it's very, very possible. It's also very, very possible to daze two characters because you can do Brimstone Blitz twice. Now, not necessarily, you know, round one, turn one or whatever, whatever else like that, but um, that was the reason for this video was really to show you the potential of a character who on paper looks pretty good, but when you start to feed into that, you can, you know, he could go on for infinity, basically. Like, as you know, if Hulk had an infinite amount of health, Nightcrawler would just keep slapping him, keep slapping him, keep slapping him, and he'd get to the point where it was guaranteed that he would do it every single time, irrespective of rerolls, irrespective of, of anything else. Um, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I had a huge blast putting it together. It became a, a puzzle that I needed to solve. Um and that's what I like about MCP as well. Uh, I like the puzzles that we have to solve. Um, and, you know, whether that puzzle is a Cosmic Ghost Rider or indeed whether that puzzle is the brand new timeline event. And yes, I will be doing a video covering my thoughts and feelings on the timeline events. Um, I had a knee jerk and I may have tempered down from that slightly, but we'll we'll leave that for another video. Um, I also really enjoy getting into the math behind the game as well. I just I just really, really enjoy it. Um, guys, I want to give a big, big shout out to all of our Patreons. Um, they really, really do help us by supporting the channel. They do it with uh, from as little as a pound a month. There'll be a link down in the description below, um, and that will take you to our Patreon page. You've got a few options, but as I mentioned, from as little as a pound a month, you can help support the channel, and it really, really does help. Um, however, that's not the only way that you can support the channel, guys. Um, you can do so by liking. Um, apparently, there's an algorithm. Leaving a comment, um, that really helps as well. But also sharing it as well, sharing it across your own social medias, your own gaming groups, that sort of thing. And again, I don't want this to be 
this is teaching people how to beat Hulk with Nightcrawler. That wasn't the aim of this video. The aim is understanding what the potential of a character is and how we can maximise that potential and take these rules and apply them to every other character in the game. And I guarantee you, uh, you will find new and exciting ways to play Marvel Crisis Protocol. Um, guys, we're going to leave it for there. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on this video. It's been a, a longer video. I've not done a recorded video by myself like this for a long, long time. Um, if you could do all the things, like subscribe, whatever else. Um, also head over to the Discord. There's nearly a thousand people on there now as well. Um, all things MCP, Shatterpoint, plus a few other things as well. And as always, guys, it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well, keep safe, and until next time, bye for now.